Dale Furman with the Town of Burn Boilers. What are we looking at, Dale? We're looking at the ASME 200,000 BTU boiler. And why is it sitting on this pallet? What's going on? It well, doesn't it have anything else. Well, it's just done being inspected. You can see the stamp. It's, hard, it's not really that visible, but there's a stamp down there for the certification. Yes, it's an ASME stamp. Yes. Which means the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. That's correct. What are they doing to your boiler? Uh, they just certify it. It you know, passes their regulations under Section 4. What do they look at? All the wells, pressure tested. Uh, material traceability. Yeah, all the traceability on all the materials. Uh, so this is an option? This is something that... Yes, it is an option. We, all, all of our boilers are built to Section 4 ASME, but the ones that are inspected... We sell code and non-code both, but they're all built the same. Okay. So if I have a commercial application and we need a certified boiler, you can provide it to me? Yes. All so right. Up to 200 pounds of BC. Great. What happens if it's more than that? No, uh, we, don't, we don't offer ASME any higher than 200,000. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. It's Mark from Econo Burn Boilers here in Brockton, New York. Today we're uh, the visit to the Obadiahs. Thank you for coming today. Today we're just looking at a few different stages of the production process. Uh, right here we're looking at uh, vessel in process here. Uh, all quarter inch plate for both the inner as well as the outer water jacket. The number of stay pins, 5 8 diameters, you know, holding the inner and outer water jackets together. It's part of the heft and ability uh, that goes into every economer. Looks like there's a whole lot more of these than there are in a lot of other boilers. There certainly are. All the Econoburn line is designed and manufactured in the Section 4 uh, standards. The only one in the U.S. that does. So that's evident by all the extra stays and everything right. holding everything together. Believe it or not, Woody, without them, with the uh, light amount of stays that uh, many other imports would have, the steel would actually buckle out like the, it looked like the Mil uh, Michelin Man. That's that why that does that. That's why that does that. Wow. And under low pressure, quarter inch plate, will move. Most other boilers, what kind of steel are they using and what is so much better about the steel that you're using? Well, the SA36 has tighter uh, chemical composition than regular carbon steel. And what is the benefit? What does that do? Uh, more, less impurities, it'll last longer, uh, less corrosion, more resistant. More resistance to corrosion? That's correct. So if I buy a counter burn, I expect this thing to last a lot longer than another boiler? That's correct. It's the same specs as my regular carbon steel, boil, carbon steel, but the requirements are just tighter. That's right. So what you're saying essentially is some people are taking stainless steel and welding it to regular steel. So they're taking ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Yeah. Why do they do that? Uh, well, actually they shouldn't do that. It creates a chemical uh, reaction when you uh, weld two dissimilar metals. It's not, it's not good. I've always wondered about that. Huh. The expansion contraction rates are so, so dissimilar. So it's much better starting with a higher quality steel from the get-go than trying to use low quality steel and high quality stainless and mixing the two together. Correct. Correct. Not only do we have a much more substantial boiler using better steel more pins, built better, but overall the quality and the raw materials are way better as well. That's correct. It's all what you don't see that's important to the counter. Everything under the hood, we looked into quite a few different aspects as we go throughout the tour today. You see the all the differences that we for happy customers for the long run. Now we're just taking a couple looks at uh, you know what's going on behind the scenes inside the Econoburn boiler and what truly makes it uh, one of the best built boilers in the uh, America. Uh, we'll take a look here at just the door assemblies. Let's take a look at one that's just coming off the uh, jig fix lines. I'm just going to take a little bit of note of uh, what's going on. This is the outer door piece which should be painted and handled and everything there. Hinges are now in place. Heavy duty hinges. But what we don't see behind the hood, or most folks don't even know is there, is this uh, K-Light installation. Um, uh, typically used in oil burners, uh, again, for heat retention um, absorption. So that is actually one inch layer of that put into the inner outer door piece, 
before the inner door is welded in place and that poured with Casco Refractory then a heat shield. Triple protection. So the idea behind that is to keep that refractory hot or to, to keep, keep from radiating energy to the planet. You know, we can touch the uh, doors even oh. with the extreme temperatures we're at. Please keep the energy in, not uh, be out to radiate the planet. So you mean if, if I'm working on my boiler and I bump my door, I won't get burnt? That should be near impossible. <laughs> All right. Well, that's something new. Not many people do that, do they? I haven't seen one yet in the industry. I've been burned my fair share of times. <laughs> As have I. Well, that's wonderful. And that's why, you know, you take the uh, safety of our customers very, very seriously. Interesting. Look at the thickness of that plate. Wrong size. We're all, we're all too big. <laughs> but Cut. basically, that would, be, that would be the heat shield. Different size doors. You, see on the you get a heat shield, yeah. and it, it's also to keep the heat on the inside. And, you know, if you're, if you're throwing logs in there and you slip and you hit, you're not going to hit the refractory. It's going to hit the heat shield. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So essentially the heat reflects back off of that steel plate back into the firebox. So there's an air space behind that. Stood off, yeah. So yep. you have a one inch standoff. Wash. Yep. Now we have refractory behind that and then we have insulation behind that. All built into a heavy duty steel door. This is what makes a conal burn the best folks. It's the details. And this is what you need to be looking for when you start comparing your boilers. This is what makes the difference in the long term, especially when you own the boiler and you're using it on a daily basis. We had to be very, very mindful that uh, here in the North American market, we want something that's going to be bulletproof, built to last, and easy to maintain. If we're able to keep this thing clean, you know, just a weekly cleaning, a very simple weekly cleaning, uh, the customers will have a great, great experience with their counterpart. So after a lot of different uh, numerous uh, uh, molds and, and in uh, designs, including um, you know, some from our friends at the State Energy Department of New York and, and uh, actual rocket scientists we had working on this, uh, we, just, we decided, at least in, in the near term, uh, for this very, very simple design. Simple's good, right? One inch in the back, three inch in the, I'm sorry, one inch in the front, three inch in the back. It allows just a slight tapered angle for the secondary combustion flame to bounce off this on that refractive angle, off the top refractory, wash across the door, back through the flame before exiting the uh, back of the boiler and up through the rear heat exchange tubes. What that did for us was bought us about 0.3 seconds of residence time, again, to uh, further drop CO emissions. But the thing that I noticed that I find very interesting as well is we don't have a little chamber to fill up with ash. There seems to be a lot of room in there, so that would mean that if you do have with this building a lot of ash, you wouldn't have to daily sweep this thing out to keep it operational. No, we'll tell the folks, uh, you know, basic maintenance, uh, very simple. Um, stoking, poking the upper firebox as the uh, interface of the boiler every day. That will drop the ash for the most part through the refractory nozzle, through that eight inches of refractory mass that we looked at earlier and discussed, uh, to the bottom chamber. Uh, this again in a slight taper angle is actually driving most of the ash towards the front. Ah! Towards the door. Okay. Easy to Two clean front. out. Easy to clean out. So we just open up a slight hole tool. Is, you know, pull her out uh, once a week. Uh, ash is a great insulator. We want it out of the boiler. What is with this damper? I noticed it looks like a ring and it seems to be machined. Oh, it certainly is. It's uh, machined for very, very tight tolerances. Again, uh, any air gaps will throw off the uh, combustion properties that you're looking to attain with a, with a gasification mold. So you guys actually take the time to machine your damper. That's right, you're machined out. Just so it will fit tightly. Absolutely. Boy, that's details. Do other people do that? Not that we've seen one, that's a good question. And again, being US engineered for US applications, we felt it was important to make it quite easy for the owners to utilize and operate. At the end of the day, North American engineered for North American applications. We are not dainty on equipment here, and we know that. That's why everything is built just as tough as daily. Right, Tom? <laughs> Get a good shot daily. It's tough. <laughs> so again, heavy bar stock through. This is our uh, damper, uh, bypass damper handle assembly. Again, a lot of meat to grab onto. This bar passing through a bronze bushing. I was just looking at that. Why would you take the time to do that? 
I mean, that's got to take a lot of extra time and money to just put that little it bushing in. It certainly does. And I'll tell you, it's everything that you don't see under the hood that really makes the account of burn shine. Everyone sees the pretty blue jackets, and hears about them from their neighbors and friends. But, you know, it's what you don't see that really counts. Well, it's things like bearings. I mean, I've never seen anybody do this. you got bearings on your latches. I mean... That's a 10 ball, Look not at that. an 8 ball. 10 balls are a bit more rare. Yeah. But the beauty of a 10 ball is that it will not snap under pressure. Huh. It does not gall. Here's our turbulator mechanism. You can see inside the inside the flu collar. Yep, we can see inside. The mechanism is Now the turbulators serve two functions. One, after the secondary combustion, slowing the flue gases as they prepare to exit, washing them against the heat exchange tubes for thermal extraction to the water to send energy to your home. Number right two, being U.S. Engineer for U.S. Applications, put on a mechanism here. The same turbulators are now cleaning the tubes, knocking off uh, any accumulated fly ash mixed with any condensate vapor, uh, dropping to the bottom. Again, for easy, once a week cleanup. Bottom door opens. Okay, this one's not ready yet in the stages, but this is where everything is going to fall from the vertical heat exchange to the bottom. For easy cleaning. I'm going to keep everything in vertical orientations, not horizontals, where there could be propensity for accumulations. What is all this stuff in the the door? You got all this rough stuff. You got. Rough stuff there, you got rough stuff down on the bottom. What kind of no, steel is that? The, we're still in the finishing stages, but what, that is our the same refractory that we utilize for the uh, secondary gasification combustion process is actually cast into our doors. That's interesting. About 60 pounds in each door. Again, the high level silica refractory use is uh, remarkable elements of heat retention, absorption, and reflection. You know, our goal is to uh, create hot water to send energy to your home, not to heat the plant. These keep the doors insulated, keeps the energy in. So it's not steel? That's right. Yep. And that's the hottest place in the stove, isn't it? Yeah, we pour the floor with the refractory and that helps uh, spread the heat evenly and uh, reduce the stresses on the steel. Wow. Is there any other refractory in the stove? Beside the doors and the floor? Oh yes, that's what uh, makes it shine. If we take a look inside, it's our refractory mask between the upper and lower chambers. The nozzle slot where the wood gases and smoke are forced through. The secondary air injected here and here. So the refractory is starting here all the way up to here? That's right. You won't find any more thicker in the industry, Woody. That's almost, a, what, a foot thick? Pretty close. Pushing nine inches on most models, yep. Once that mass is up to temperature, that's what's going to continue the uh, good foundation for solid, reliable combustion. This thing's built like a tank. It certainly is. Definitely one of the heaviest boilers that I have ever seen in construction. If you look at the way this boiler is built, the welds, the reinforcement, the construction of it, the fact that the way the hinges, every detail takes into account longevity. How long do you think this boiler should last? This one here, we're, we have a service life we expect of 30, 35 years with a warranty of 25. 25 year warranty? That's one of the longest in the industry. It sure is. Um, How many pages is that warranty? One simple one, Woody. Really? One simple one, that's right. One simple page? One simple page. All right. It seems like you guys pay attention to everything. You better believe we did. I think you're trying to build the best boiler in the market. We think we are. We believe we are. You know, a lot of people say that they don't make things like they used to. Well, here at Comburn, we make things like they used to, like they should be made. And who are you? I'm Chris Saley, and uh, these things are built to last. And you're uh, the owner's son? I am the owner's son. Thank you, Chris. I think you'll find there is no better boiler made in the United States than in a Comburn. If you want something heavy duty and you want it to last, this is the baby right here.